Good morning, Dallas. How you doing today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm good. You know, man, listen, I know you guys are dealing with a tough loss like from last week against the Dallas Cowboys, but what is the overall mood in the locker room right now, Dallas? Um, I think the overall mood in the locker room is uh, pretty good. You know, uh, you kind of look at that game, uh, see what you can learn, flush it, and move on to the next week. That's the great part about this league is uh, there's a new challenge coming up each and every week, and uh, we can, you know, kind of reset ourselves and wash the bad taste out of our mouth and uh, focus on the process this week. Dallas, there was a, a report after the game that, that one of your teammates, you know, had a, a something to say to a media member about, hey, the offense, the other team got the ball out quicker. We don't do that. And I think that's kind of an observation maybe a lot of us have had. I'm curious from your perspective as a player on the offense, what is it like in terms of your thought process, what you think should be going on versus feedback with the coaches? Like, is it an open door policy? Can you, Jalen, offensive lineman, go to Brian Johnson, go to Nick Sirianni and say, hey, we don't think this is working. We need to do this. Take us through what it's like when you guys notice something, whoever it is on the team, and then trying to implement that on the field. Is that communication happening constantly? Take us through that. Yeah, it's it's definitely an open door policy. Um, you know, obviously Jalen probably has the most say in everything because he's the quarterback. He's the one directing it all. But um, you know, we definitely talk to the coaches about things we like during the week, um, plays that we have in that week. Um, different things that we want to change, um, think it would help. So I think it's an open-door policy. And, um, you know, it's it's probably more one of those things that after a tough loss, um, you know, emotions are high. And um, somebody probably said something that they didn't fully mean. Um, you know, you go back and watch the tape, and uh, you have a different feeling than you do right after the game or during the game, things like that. So, um, you know, it's a, it's an emotion-filled game, and, um, right after the game, everybody's emotional. Everybody's uh, feeling the worst they have all week, the worst you can at that moment. Um, and sometimes it's probably better to take a step back and, um, you know, let your emotions calm down before you make any decisions. But that's not what happened. I don't think it's a big deal. And um, I think we'll go to work this week and try to correct everything we can. I know you're just starting to integrate back into this offense coming back from that, that, that surgery that you had on your arm. But why do you think, in your opinion, that this offense, for whatever reason, is getting off to a slow start in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, um, you can look at it a bunch of different ways. You know, uh, last week or two weeks ago against the 49ers, you know, I think the offense started off pretty hot. You know, we just kind of fizzled off in the red zone, um, you know, kicking two field goals early on. And then uh, last week we kind of shot ourselves in the foot on our first drive. You know, um, we got the – pass interference where we were all the way down to the five yard line it moved us to the 30 so it was a big 25 yard swing and then we fumbled the next uh few plays after that so um it just seems like we've had self-inflicting errors um when we've gotten down in the red zone it seems like we've been able to move the ball but we haven't been efficient enough scoring touchdowns um you know turning the ball over things like that uh when we get near the red zone um it's catastrophic to a team and um, you know, it definitely definitely hurt us uh, last week. Dallas Goddard joining us here is Weekly Spot on the Midday Show. Dallas, uh, how about you physically coming out of the first game? We know last time we talked to you, you said you were healed, you were clear to go. But is it – and you've gone through a couple of these in your career where you have an injury, keeps you out at least a few weeks, then you come back. I know. I think it was the, one of your first catches. You, you kind of went down and you landed on your forearm. And the first thing I thought of was, like, obviously he's fine, but – does it take a hit or two or a, a tackle or two for you to, like, trust it? Like, yeah, I'm fine. I got back up. No worries here. Take us through what it was like for you getting back out there, you know, just a few weeks after a surgery. Yeah, it was uh, it was a bittersweet game. Obviously, I was really excited uh, to be out there. The outcome uh, made it a little bit better. But um, it, was, it was really good to get back out there and get my feet wet back in uh, in the game situations. And like you said, there was a little bit um, of – hesitant um you know one of the catches i probably would have stiff armed and i i didn't stiff arm uh i went to the ground one time where i'd usually put my hand down to brace and i just you know tucked it so there was definitely um little things that i did throughout the game where it was you know baby in my arm just because it takes a little bit to be comfortable but um it felt really good throughout the game feels good now so uh, really happy with where we're at and i'm excited that i get to be out on the field with the team uh continuing Dallas, you know, I think we talked about this early in the season, you know, week one, two, about the idea of teams playing you guys differently, throwing different looks at you. I, I want to bring it to now. Nick Bosa a couple weeks ago said, 
that they figured out the blueprint to stop you guys, specifically Jalen Hurts, and then saw some analysts yesterday saying that Dallas did a lot of similar things defensively that the 49ers did. I know you didn't play in the, in the Niners game, you played in this game, but obviously you're seeing everything we're seeing here and these analysts are. Do, do you notice similarities in terms of how defenses are playing you guys now uh, and now your chance to and your team's chance to adjust? Are you seeing that or is that an oversimplification of, of what's going on against you guys? Um, it's a little bit of both. You know, you definitely – you go all week and you watch film and um, you think you got to tell on um, what the defense is going to do. You know, obviously they like to play these coverages, this front. They um, stem to a different front um, in different formations. And um, it seems a lot of the time when we get out there, um, it's not – especially at the beginning of the game, it's not exactly what we would expect. So um, sometimes it takes a second or two to try, or a drive or two to figure out how the defense is trying to stop us, the wrinkles they put in their um, game plan to defend us. Um, so it's definitely something that we need to continue to try to figure out and try to, you know, maximize the plays early on that we can uh, figure out what they're doing and uh, get in different formations to try to get tells of what the defense is running against us that week. Um, but then there's just things that we need to do execution-wise um, better to help us keep drives alive and, uh, stay ahead of the sticks. And with that being said, have you have you cracked open the film of Seattle yet? And if you have, what do you see? Th- what do you see could potentially be a problem for you uh, uh, with you guys against them defensively? Yeah, um, look at their film really briefly. Um, you know, we haven't got into the game plan or anything yet with the coaches, but um, obviously they got good players on their defense. Uh, they got they got a good safety that uh, plays like a linebacker, flies around. Um, you know, it's it's going to be a matchup for us. They put him in a lot of different spots. Um, but they got a good defense, and uh, we're going to have to find ways to attack it, and hopefully uh, we can go out there and uh, kind of get back on track, put a lot of points up, and, you know, get a little co- little bit of confidence back um, in our offense. Dallas, I'm curious for you, a fan perspective, we talk about this all the time, NFL flexing. It's been going on a long time, but there's a unique one this year that you guys are a part of right now. The game was originally scheduled this week for Sunday, move to Monday. What do you think about this from your perspective as a player that a game could be on a Monday and let's say they move it to Sunday or obviously this time with you guys, it's Sunday to Monday. This is a brand new thing in the NFL. Do you like it? Uh, is it like, man, you got to change the whole day you're playing. It changes your routine for the week. What is it like for the player in terms of this kind of flex, not just time, but now day? Um, you know, obviously playing on Sunday at 425 would have been cool um anytime you get a primetime game um you know you look at it as a, as a good thing um you know it means you're a good team it means people want to watch you so that's always a positive and you know for the players um obviously you heard people talk about it a couple of weeks ago that it might happen and whatnot and you just don't really worry about it that much because you know your week is going to be as scheduled anyways um and you just kind of focus on the week at hand um so probably the biggest thing for me was making sure um, my mom and uh, other people traveling to the game knew about it um, so they could get their flights and hotels uh, switched around and accommodated to what they need. So uh, that was probably my biggest thing. And, you know, like I said, it gave us an extra day this week to uh, recover from the game. And then, you know, it's it'll be the same week starting tomorrow as um, a normal week would be just a day off. So um, it's not really too big of a deal for the players, I don't think. Um, I'd say it affects the fans more than us. Who pay, who paying for those flight changes though, Dallas? That's you. <laughs> that's coming out of your pocket. Oh man, uh, maybe a little bit, but uh, <laughs> it shouldn't be too bad. It'll be it'll be nice to have them out there and uh, be nice to see them and the support's always great. Yeah, definitely that. Well, that's good stuff, Dallas. Good luck on Monday night. We'll be watching and let's get a win and get this thing back on track. Appreciate it, Dallas. Let's do it. Appreciate you guys. Have a there good he one. goes, Dallas Goddard. There joining us in his weekly spot. So. Uh, look, a couple things there hit me. No, number one, uh, interesting just to hear a player come back midseason after a pretty gruesome injury at, that required surgery, and he, he admitted that he was a little hesitant on some of those plays, so hopefully we get an even better version of Goddard moving forward. But then, you know, he didn't shy away, Hugh, from saying that maybe what, whoever that player was that said something to Derek Gunn, that maybe that you don't do that, right? He, he a, little did, diver- a little diversity. Yeah, well, heat of the ad- moment. Wait a minute, I said it wrong. Adversity. Adversity, yes. There's a little <laughs> There certainly is diversity, too, in the There's locker definitely room. definitely yeah. some diversity. Diversity it was in the show some, and the locker room. Diversity, good. <laughs> adversity, not good. No, it was some adversity in the locker room. It's, it's just interesting because we've heard a couple of times, you know, this is where you got to read between the lines. Now, I still believe that this team is a cohesive unit. But 
it sounds to me, just from listening to some of the players talk, they didn't go into too much detail, but, you know, this is me reading between the lines, mm-hmm. that there was some come-to-Jesus moments that they had in the locker room. I mean, which, which they should because this can't feel comfortable. You know, getting beat up two weeks in a row can't feel comfortable. And now on top of that, when you have rumblings of anonymous air quotes, people saying stuff about certain things, that's usually things that you want to keep in-house. We got to get it going this week, man. We got to get it going this Monday night because if we don't, it's not going to get any easier. 